Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain you about the derivation for the gate width of a monostable multivibrator by considering the reverse saturation current ICBO. ICBO is nothing but reverse saturation current when emitter is acting as open circuited. In the previous expression of the gate width, we have calculated the gate width like a T is equal to 0 0.693 into RC. That was the previous expression we have calculated in the previous video where this reverse saturation current was neglected. Okay, we have not considered this ICBO effect and now in this video, this gate width is going to be calculated with the help of the reverse saturation current. What happens and how, up to what level the current, uh, the capacitor can charge with the help of this reverse saturation current. See, we know initially the Q2, uh, we have assumed uh, some quiescent condition which is a stable condition such that Q2 is in on state, okay, in the first of Q2 is in on state and Q1 is in off state. This is the quiescent state or stable state. At this particular time, the voltage across base 2, nothing but base of the transistor Q2 is VB sat. That's why it is a low level voltage. VB sat is actually like 0.3 volts or 0.4 volts depending upon the silicon or germanium. Now at this point, we are giving at this time instant T naught, we are giving a negative going triggering pulse at the base 2. Then this particular negative pulse will change the state of the transistor Q2. So now at this particular point what happens Q1 comes into off state, sorry Q2 comes into on state and Q1 comes into on state. Okay, so as this second transistor comes into off state, the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the collector of this particular transistor Q2 becomes high that is applied to the first transistor then Q1 comes into on state. As long as the capacitor Q1 is in on state, what happens? What about the capacitor? The capacitor which is connected between VCC and this base 2, that capacitor charges. This is the charging period shown here. But now, as this reverse saturation current of this second transistor is there, this reverse saturation current is also been added with the original voltage. See, previously the capacitor has to charge up to VCC, but now the capacitor has to charge up to VCC plus ICBO into R. Okay, so VCC is the voltage applied, the maximum power supply in the path plus ICBO into R. This is the reverse saturation current flowing in that path with a resistance R. Okay, so I, VCC plus ICBO into R. This is the new level that the capacitor has to charge. This is the final level that the capacitor has to charge. Previously it was VCC, now it is VCC plus ICBO into R. Hope you understand. Except this remaining everything is common. In the previous video, we have calculated the time instant T by, uh, by considering the uh, equation of the capacitor to charge like V final minus V final minus V initial into E power minus T by tau. Okay, the same expression here also we are going to consider but the difference is the final value. <coughs> Okay, so previously the final value was VCC, now it is VCC plus ICBO into R. So, we know the formula, we know the formula that is V out is equal to V final minus V final minus V initial, initial into E power minus T by tau e power minus t by tau. So, across the base 2 of the transistor we are taking. So, at base of at base of q2 is vb2 is equal to v final value. What is the v final value? See, I will write completely here v final minus v final minus v initial into e power minus t by tau. See, 
that gives VB2 is equal to what is the V final value up to which the capacitor has to charge that is VCC plus ICB1 into R. So VCC plus ICBO into R this is the final value minus again V final VCC plus ICBO into R minus V initial where the capacitor has started charging. See it was VB set this level is VB set when the transistor Q1 comes into on state it goes down by a level I1 into RC. So from here the level is I1 into RC. Okay. So that level is VB sat minus I1 into RC. So V initial value is VB sat minus I1 into RC e power minus T by tau. Okay. So just expand this separate this by taking uh, I1 in RC. So, I1 RC where VCC or VC is at when the first transistor is in on state that is equal to VCC minus I1 into RC. Okay. Suppose if you take the transistor You are having a resistor here RC the, this current is coming from VCC this I1 current is flowing like this then this current it is VCE sat as this transistor is in on state so it is VCE sat this VCE sat is given as this entire voltage minus of this drop so if you substitute this VCE sat uh, what is that I1 RC so I1 RC is equal to VCC minus VCE sat. Okay, here we are we are going to substitute. So therefore, VBE two is equal to VCC minus uh, VCC plus ICBO into R V final minus V final. So VCC minus V ICBO into R V final minus V final minus V initial. It is now VB is at minus what is this VCC minus VC is at okay into V power minus T by tau V power minus T by tau. So now what happens exactly at T is equal to T VB2 is equal to V gamma C. Here at this particular point at t is equal to some time instant t. Okay, instead of t1, we are taking some t uh, because the width, the pulse width we are calculating that is t. So exactly at t is equal to t instance, what happens? V voltage across capacitor becomes V gamma so that the uh, transistor Q1 comes into off state and Q2 again comes into on state because of the sufficient input to get to uh, base to emitter voltage. So VB2 is equal to V gamma, therefore V gamma is equal to VCC plus ICBO into R minus, so here VCC minus of minus VCC here, so 2 VCC and ICBO into R. minus of VCE set plus VBE set into V power minus T by tau. I already told you V gamma is the average value of the saturation voltages of the transistor. Okay. So V power minus T by tau is equal to T by tau means T now it becomes T is equal to capital T. So now it becomes capital T. And here also it becomes capital T. T by tau is equal to 2 VCC plus ICBO into R 
minus of VC is set plus VB is set divided by VCC plus ICBO into R minus V gamma. So, therefore, T is equal to now from the previous expression we can write T is equal to tau into E power will come out to the right hand side as a log natural logarithm 2 into VCC plus ICBO by 2 minus VBE sat plus VCE sat by 2. Okay, so I already told you this value is nothing but V gamma divided by VCC plus ICBO into R minus V gamma. So, neglecting the junction voltages and cutting voltage of the transistor because V gamma is very small compared to the remaining voltages. So, neglect the cutting voltage, neglect the cutting voltage and junction voltages. So, VB set and VC set. T is equal to tau into ln of 2 times VCC minus ICBO into R by 2 divided by VCC plus ICBO into R. So, that is equal to tau ln 2 plus tau ln 1 plus alpha by 2, 1 plus some phi by 2 and 1 plus phi. So, by assuming phi is equal to ICBO into R divided by VCC. So, therefore, T is equal to tau ln 2 minus tau ln 1 plus phi by 1 plus phi by 2. Just these two are inversed, so that is why minus came forward. So, since ICBO increases with temperature. Because as the temperature increases, the reverse saturation current increases. Okay, increases with temperature. We can conclude, we can conclude that the delay time, that the delay time tau decreases as temperature increases. Decreases as temperature increases. Okay, we know that relation as temperature increases, the, the reverse saturation current also increases. That is why you can say that the delay time tau decreases as the temperature increases. Okay, so this is what the expression of gate width T, this is nothing but gate width with the consideration of reverse saturation current ICBO. Thank you.